Bring it. Um, well, let's talk about Captain Nichols next, uh, Tom. I mean, uh, there's a clip first where we meet Captain Nichols, if you can set it up. Uh, so this is, this is um, the moment in the film where uh, Joey and Albert have been friends for a while and they've become almost um, like spiritual brothers. And war is declared in the summer of 1914 and the world has changed. And um, Captain Nichols is, is an officer in the North Somerset Yeomanry, which is a regiment of the British cavalry. And he's arrived in the village in Devon to scout for mounts. And Ted Narricutt, played by Peter Mullen, sells Joey to Captain Nichols for 30 guineas. And Albert is not happy about it. Roll the clip. He won't obey anyone else. He won't be any good in the war, neither. He he shies at every sound. I'm sorry. What well, Joey's going on, I'm going to I'm volunteering. I see. What's your name, lad? Albert, sir. And how old 19, are you, Albert? 19, sir. Is that the truth? No, sir, but, but I look 19 and I'm bigger than most 19-year-olds and I'm, I'm strong, sir, and I'm not afraid of anything. I don't doubt your qualifications, Albert. But the law is very clear about the proper age for soldiering. And your father's done what he had to do, you know that. 30 guineas isn't nearly enough to purchase a horse as fine as your Joey. I know that, but it's all I've got. Will you lease him to me, Albert, to be my own mount? I promise you man to man that I'll look after him as closely as you've done. I'll respect him and all the care that you've taken with him. And if I can, I'll return him to your care. Now, Tom, you, uh, you had a heck of a year last year. Um, yeah. He's got uh, very nice eyes, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, they, they really <laughs> pop out. It was like that, that scene is like an eye competition. <laughs> and Tom's clearly winning. So Jeremy tries crying to see whether or not <laughs> if he does the crying, maybe he'll distract people from the blueness. Is it true your eyes are almost entirely CG? Yeah. Is that true? Or yeah, yeah, <laughs> but you're real eyes, just, yeah. to, just to verify that. <laughs> but you, you had a crack in here last year. You had the archipelago and the deep blue sea. But I think yeah. most mainstream audiences will know you as Loki in Thor, who's yeah. a thoroughly rotten egg. Now, as far as Captain is. Nichols is a good egg. So was it, a, was it nice to play the contrast and let people know you're not a rapscallion? Definitely, <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I, I suppose I, I, uh, I'm always drawn to complexity in, in roles. I think um, um, Loki is a kind of heroic villain, certainly in his own mind. And, and Captain Nichols is a flawed hero mm. um, because in the story... He's the agent of separation. Mm. He doesn't want to separate these two, you know, Albert from his, his animal. And I think it, it was a huge, um, as soon as I read it actually, and it was that scene that was the first thing I read, you described him, you des I think you described in the screenplay, you described Captain Nichols as a, a modest, decent, upper class English officer. And modest and decent. Devilish, devilishly handsome, blue-eyed cat <laughs> is, is what the original draft said. <laughs> okay, but, I don't know if I read that one. Uh, but it was the, the it's like like Richard was saying, the decency was something that really appealed. That that that, it, that um, I wanted to play. It was it was so nice to play somebody who was good mm. and um, to represent the doomed youth mm. of a lost generation um, and. Uh, you know, a generation of gentlemen officers who adhered to a kind of chivalry and, and a code of honor that was never really seen again. Mm. And they'd inherited a value system from their, their, their fathers and, and grandfathers about the way war should be fought in the Boer War. I mean, up until this point, that's the thing we tend to forget is cavalry charges were on the whole mm. very, very successful mm. because they were terrifying. And all regiments of horse had advantage over regiments of foot because you, you had pace, speed, and power, and height. And the British army, in all of their innocence, thought that sending the cavalry over to northern France to, tell, to teach the Kaiser a thing or two would, would be effective. And they really had no idea about the, the, the developments of the technologies of the German military and the, the extent of the use of the machine gun. And, um, 
I really like myself and, and Benedict Cumberbatch and, and Patrick Kennedy really, really felt a sort of responsibility that inside this huge story where you touch on the faces of so many different kinds of people mm -hmm. in the First World War, we were those British officers that, that Siegfried Sassoon and, and Wilfred Owen wrote about um, that never came home. Mm. Um, so there was an innocence to it and, uh, and a humor too. I mean, there's a great banter between the three of us and, and we're all quite competitive and mm. in, in before we go, you know, who's got the fastest horse and all that stuff. And that was really fun. It was just a banter as well. Yeah. About, the, about, the, ba the, about the cap. A bit about the, the, cap. About the cap. Yeah. yeah. It was all, they were very stylish um, young guys. I don't know if it's of any interest, but the three of us read the autobiography of Siegfried Sassoon called mm -hmm. Memoirs of a Fox Hunting Man. Mm -hmm. And it made us realize <coughs> that actually all the cavalry officers, they weren't professional soldiers. They were, ge they were sort of country gentlemen used to living off the land who, who hunted in the winter. And the cavalry was sort of what they did to, to keep the horses fit in the summer. So it was a different kind of, of soldiery. Mm -hmm. And there's a great sense of futility uh, as well, of, yeah. of life's loss, of talent's yeah. loss. I mean, Nichols yeah. is clearly a talented artist. Where, where did that come? Was that Richard? Was yeah. that your creation, or the fact that? Uh, no, that's in the no, book. No, that's, that's, okay. that's in the book. It's yeah. in the book and in the film, yeah. and uh, I mean, in the, in the play, and it's it's very very moving. And there is there are scenes which would have taken too long in the film, but um, I should say it comes from something that Michael Morpurgo said when he had interviewed. Um, ex-cavalryman who had come home in the First World War at his local pub in Devon, they had said that the only people the, ho the officers felt they could talk to were the horses. And so the officers would go into the stables at night and you could hear officers talking to their horses and sort of saying, you know, I'm afraid and I'm scared and I don't know what to do. And, and the, the horses became these, these silent, mute confidants for, for the, the officers' terror. And um, in, in the book, Michael Morpurgo has Captain Nichols go into the stable at night to get away from the kind of bravado of the, uh, the officer's mess. Mm. And he talks to Joey and, and he sketches him while he's talking to him. And that, and that Joey's, you know, because the, the, the novel is told from Joey's perspective, um, it soothes him and it makes him feel safe. And he's not at home. He's not in Devon anymore. He's in this um, new environment with 300 other horses, 400 other horses. He's only seen three other horses in his life and suddenly there's 300 it's like yeah. being going to school for the first time and captain nichols is there calming him down 